brothers, 2 Corinthians 6 and 14 reads, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath the light with darkness? Now, man, that's a that's a broad and loaded scripture. Uh, for the majority of my life, I've heard a portion of that scripture recited several several times, and that is, uh, "Be ye not unequally yoked." Uh, but what does that really mean? Like I said, that's loaded. It's broad. What does that mean? You know, uh, light should not be with darkness. The righteousness or the righteous should not be with the unrighteous. But check this out. Most people uh, will say they are righteous. It would be uh, hard to find someone who admits or believes they are unrighteous. So how do two people who believe they are righteous get together and find themselves unequally yoked? find themselves fighting one another uh, in divorce court or, or child support court. How does that happen when they both believe the righteous? Now, it'd be hard to find someone to say they are darkness. Most people would say they are light. So how does it happen that people break up, people get divorced, people can't get along, can't communicate, but they both believe they are light. Something ain't making sense, fellas. You know, so, uh, you know, I've never heard that scripture really broken down. You know, now I understand where the don't be unequally yoked is. There's a reference uh, to uh, oxen, oxen having a yoke on them, a team, a team of oxen, uh, two ox having a, a yoke around their necks. You don't want one ox bigger than the other ox if they're a team because uh, that's going to put more pressure, more responsibility on uh, the bigger ox and they won't be able to pursue their purpose. They won't be able to work efficiently and do what they have to do. And that's what it is with couples. If you're not equally yoked, one's going to have more responsibilities, more pressure on them than the other other and and the one that lacks uh, certain things is, is not going to grow. They're not going to mature. Now, I'm going to break down how you can avoid being unequally yoked. Man, we're going to we're going to focus on SQ, spiritual quotient, EQ, emotional quotient, IQ, intelligence quotient. Man, these, these three things, man, you need to focus on when selecting a mate. You need to uh, make sure you guys are compatible uh, as far as your spiritual quotient, emotional quotient, and intelligence quotient. You need to make sure you are, in, are, are compatible. Now, now, check this out. If you're not necessarily compatible or close to being at the same levels in these three facets, there is the way, man, there is a way you can overcome, and you know, that gap. And to overcome that gap, to fill that void, to fill that gap up to where you guys can move, can move in unison, uh, you're going to have to have uh, patience, uh, compassion, and acceptance. You know, uh, if you don't have those things and you guys are off in those three facets, you're not uh, compatible in those three facets, man, you, you, you're going to have some trouble. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Now, brothers, we, like I said, we got three facets uh, that we need to focus on to avoid being connected to someone that uh, we're not equally yoked with, meaning they can't go through this life with us, uh, being able to balance us out and so we can pursue the mission and the purpose we're set out to complete. You know, we all have a mission, we all have work to do, 
And if you guys are connected, a team yoked together, whether that's married by law or relationship, if you're yoked together and these three facets, SQ, IQ, and EQ are unbalanced, are off, not even compatible, not close to being compatible, you're going to have problems, man. So let's avoid that. Now, check it out. We're going to start with IQ. You know, IQ and we're going to go into EQ and SQ. Now, IQ, uh, intelligence quotient. Now, brothers, let, let's, let's read what they say IQ is. Let's read what they say IQ is. IQ is the measure your ability to solve problems, use logic, and grasp or communicate complex ideas. All right. Now, man, you know, uh, it can be frustrating when someone, uh, when you're connected with someone that you don't feel has a high IQ. You know, uh, they can't reason well. They're not logical. You know, uh, they don't really get or understand complex ideas. You know, uh, and I've been in that situation to where you have to hold back a piece of yourself because you don't want to really offend that person or, you know, they can't really tap into that, that topic of discussion where you can really go and want to go. So, you know, you avoid certain topics. You avoid, you avoid certain conversations because you, you don't believe, you know, they can really go there. You, you, you'll you offend them or, man, it's just it's a waste of time, you know, and, and that is no disrespect, but, you know, that it is what it is. Uh, everybody doesn't have the same level of IQ. And... Uh, it's certain topics, you know, you, you may not want to talk talk with me about. Also, uh, you know, I believe I can grasp anything if I want to. Some things I'm just not interested in. And so, uh, but I definitely understand complex ideas. Uh, but uh, some things I'm just not interested in. So, that IQ, man, you can overcome it, but... This is the thing, and I mentioned acceptance and compassion. We'll, we'll say the person who has uh, the challenge IQ, let's we'll say that that person has to recognize that my IQ uh, isn't where I want it to be. You know, the way I reason. The way I uh, deal with complex situation, complex ideas, the way uh, uh, I, apply, I apply or or don't apply logic to situations is not where it needs to be. Acceptance. If that person can accept that and own that, that's a start. That's the start. And then the next step is for that person to say and do what they need to do to raise their IQ. Because we can all raise our IQ. I, I believe we can. Uh, we can read more. We can study more. We can investigate more. Question more. You know, question things. Investigate. Ask questions. Why this? And then investigate it. You know, that raises your IQ. You're much more knowledgeable and that helps uh, you in troubleshooting ideals, you know, and, and troubleshooting problems, reasoning, you know, applying logic that helps you to question things really help you because when you question things and you investigate them, you get answers. Your IQ is raised. 
your intelligence quotient is raised automatically. So the person with the challenge or low IQ, and, and it's all relative, right? Uh, their IQ may be low to you, but not low to someone else. So this is our relative. Uh, but that's the first two steps they have to do. Recognize it, accept it, and do what they have to do to raise it, right? If they want to be with you, if they want to be equally yoked with you, if they don't care about it or you feel it, they don't care about it and not willing to put it to work, man, you need to disconnect yourself, you know, if that's going to be an issue for you. Right. The second thing to that is the person with uh, the relatively high IQ must have compassion. Right. You, you got to have compassion and you can't hold it over that person's head that you have a higher IQ. And like I said, this is all relative speaking because your IQ may be high to them, but it may be low to someone else. So this is our relative speaking. Uh, you got to have compassion. Don't hold it over their heads. Uh, don't make them feel less than. You know, that's not cool. So compassion. Now, how do we get to a place of where the one person can accept and own and do the work that needs to be done to raise their IQ and the one person can have compassion and not hold it over that person's head, but work with them, encourage them, support them. How can both of these people get to this place, right? Ego. You got to check your ego. You got to. If the person with the relatively low IQ uh, is too prideful, too stubborn to admit and own up to Hey, I'm not where I want to be or where I need to be. Uh, that's a e that's an ego issue. You know, they got to check their ego. You know, pride comes before destruction, so you, you got to check your ego. You know, you can't you, you can't be too prideful uh, and get embarrassed easily. You know, that's ego. Being embarrassed and being prideful that's ego. You got to accept. Hey. I'm not where I want to be, and I'm with this person, and the IQ levels are not even close. So you got to have enough fortitude and, and uh, strength to either disconnect from the relationship or do what you got to do to raise your IQ. The person with the, 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 the alleged high IQ got to check your ego. Right. Understand that I may have the higher IQ in this relationship, but in another relationship, I could possibly have a very low IQ. It's our relative guys. So have compassion, check your ego. Uh, and and uh, that's the way. That's the way to fill in the gap. Accountability, compassion, check ego. Now, as far as the IQ, I believe out of the three facets, man, IQ, EQ, and SQ, I believe IQ is uh, is very important. But out of the three, I believe it's least important out of the three because uh, I've seen some relationships thrive and get along when the IQ levels were off. We're not even close to being close. We're not even close to being equal. I've seen some relationships thrive. Uh, you know, it, it, it's possible. The second facet, EQ, emotional quotient. Emotional quotient, man. Let, let's see what it says about EQ. Let's check this out, man. Emotional quotient, or EQ, is the ability to understand, use, and manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflict. Whoa. That's why I made this second, because this is, to me, uh, the second most important facet of the three. 
uh, emotional intelligence, man. Let me tell you something, man. Uh, no matter how, how high your IQ is, if you lack EQ or high EQ level, man, you're going to have some, some problems, man. Um, there's going to, there's going to be furniture moving, possibly. There's going to be dishes thrown, door slam, holes in the walls, uh, silent treatment for days or weeks. I've heard people not speaking in the same home, man, for months. Uh, it's going to be yelling, fighting. Police could possibly get involved. Uh, somebody could possibly die. Uh, black eyes, broken bones, you know, all these things are possibilities. When you have a low EQ, very important, brothers. And let me tell you, <clears throat> this applies to women too, but I, I speak to brothers for the most part. She has to be able to have the tough conversations in a uh, mature, responsible, and loving way. As couples, man, or as a couple, you're going to face things. You're going to face challenges. You're going to face situations where you're going to have to have those tough talks. Man, especially if uh, you got a blended family. You know, uh, you know you're know, you going to have to have those talks, man. And if she avoids having tough talks or she gets irate or she gets emotional, and, and let's, say, let's assume you're, you're talking calmly and, and lovingly, and she gets emotional and she cries when, when addressed or approached with anything, or she avoids situations, she avoids conversations. You got a problem. You got a problem. And what, what happens typically, guys, with a lot of men, we, we, uh, sweep things under the rug because when we try to have those tough conversations, you know, we, we know how it's going to end up. You know, she's going to become the victim. Uh, she may get emotional. She may cry. Nothing was resolved. And here you are, you know, possibly apologizing. And for what? because she cried because you're trying to have a, a tough conversation that needed to be addressed. Brothers, you know, like they say, man, she has to be able to put on, on a big girl panties at some point. And uh, she has to be mature emotionally. You know, her if her EQ is low, you got problems. You, you really got problems. But like I said before, the gap can be filled through compassion, patience, all right, and acceptance. It can be filled. If she can admit, yes, my, my EQ is low. Yeah. And this is, you know, this is why it's low, maybe from her childhood, most likely, or a previous relationship. If she can admit that and then say, I'm going to do the work to raise my EQ, right? That's a start, but then you have to be compassionate and patient and don't hold that over her head. Don't attack her with it. So if she's being accountable and you're being compassionate, man, you can fill in the gap. You can. But if one of those things are off and, and the levels are not equal, not equally yoked, you got problems. Third facet, SQ. Spiritual quotient, man. Let's see. Let's see what it says about spiritual quotient. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Spiritual quotient. A measure that looks at a person's spiritual acumen. It is as important as intelligent quotient and emotional quotient. Spirituality is the ability to recognize that there is intelligence beyond our five senses. That is the most important quotient. That is the mo most important facet of the three. Spirituality, 
spiritual quotient. Brothers, if this is low, I don't care if you guys are equally ill emotionally or from, from intelligent, intelligence wise. You guys are equal there if the spirituality is unbalanced. Won't happen. You got problems. You're going to be miserable. That is the most important of the three facets. The most important spirituality. You got to recognize. You got to be with someone to recognize. This thing is bigger than our five senses. They got to see beyond. They got to see beyond. They got to have a conscience. Uh, they got to have a sense of I am. That they are a part of I am. A bigger body. They are a part of God. It's bigger than their five senses. There's work to be done. We can't just go through life, you know, uh, nonchalant and not caring. We got work to be done. There's, there's a bigger plan and we're part of it. They have to have that understanding, man. That's the light. You know, if that is off, you got problems. You got, you got your biggest problem beyond IQ and beyond EQ. If that SQ is off, spiritual quotient is off, you got the biggest problem of them all. It will not work. I know a couple, a very, a, a couple very close to me. Uh, now this happened years ago, man. Uh, they got married young. Dated in high school, got married young. She was raised Muslim. He was raised Christian. Now, when they got together, they were young, 18, 19. Neither one was practicing the religion they were raised in. Neither one. Uh, but as they began maturing, and living, you know, getting older, they started going back to the roots of how they were raised. He started being heavy on Christianity. She started being heavy on, on, on being a Muslim. And the thing was, man, I'm going to tell you the thing that, that really broke them up and led them to divorce court. They didn't have any children either. They both had high IQs, very high, both. Uh, EQ was not equally yoked. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, he was a bad boy. I and mean, when I mean a bad boy, he was a business guy, but you know, he stepped out a few times, right? He got caught. But he was a provider, protector, to a sense, you know. Um, but he stepped out a couple of times. But he started getting heavy into pushing his Christianity in the home. And she was heavy on being a Muslim woman. Uh, he would beat her over the head, uh, figure of speech. Uh, he would beat her over the head with Christianity and telling her that she was going to hell. Anyone that wasn't a Christian was going to hell. He would tell her this. And this is a way to manipulate and control her. Now, I'm being totally unbiased, right? Uh, objective, because this guy is closer to me than she is, you know, uh, but I have to be objective and I have to be honest. So that was a way of him manipulating her and controlling her to get her to convert to Christianity. He would say, you're going to hell. If you're not a Christian, you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. Now, <clears throat> her thing was, she said, you know, I love him. And I wouldn't mind converting to Christianity if he lived the life of a Christian. That's in the Bible. 
he doesn't live the life of a Christian, but he attacks me with Christianity. He attacks my Muslim religion, my Muslim roots. So why would I convert when I don't see Jesus in him? Why would I convert? Hey, man, it sounds like she had a very high EQ and he had a low EQ, right? That's what it sounds like. Uh, you know, things are off. Now, they could have closed the gap through acceptance, compassion, and patience. Now, it looks like she had compassion and patience, but he couldn't accept where he was wrong. He did accept later where he was wrong, but they had divorced by then. It was too late. The spiritual intelligence, the spiritual quotient, they both were passionate at this point about their, their two religions. Uh, but I don't think he handled that right saying she was going to hell if she didn't believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, it, it, is a bigger plan than that. And, and you know, the way I see Jesus and the way some people see Jesus, two different things. I, I see him as a uh, higher, higher consciousness, the greatest consciousness. Uh, but everybody doesn't see it that way. But she even said she was willing, you know, to convert to Christianity if he showed uh, or lived the life of a Christian. Man, I thought that was, that was profound, you know. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, they ended up divorcing unequally yoked, man. And it was deeper than what the scripture says, man. It was deeper than light uh, yoking up with darkness or righteous yoking up with unrighteous. Both of these people were decent people. Both of these people believe they were light. Both of these people believe they were righteous. It's deeper than that. You know, and so, you know, that's why I had to really break it down from my perspective, what it means to be equally yoked. Uh, but like I said, man, if those levels are not equally yoked, you can fill in the gap, man, through uh, passion, compassion, patience and love and acceptance, accountability, you know, owning up to what you lack and then doing the work. Hey, let me know what you guys think, man. From me to you, as always, love. Peace.